A diving bell is a chamber or vessel used to transport divers from the surface to underwater depths and back to the surface. It is similar to a submarine, but the diving bell is much smaller in size compared to a submarine fleet. This vessel is typically used to perform various underwater tasks. Diving bells were first used in the 4th century BC. Aristotle explained that they enable divers to breathe properly by lowering a cauldron. The cauldron does not fill with water but holds air. This is because the cauldron is forced straight down into the water. In 1535, Guglielmo de Lorena designed and tested his own diving bell to explore a sunken ship in a lake near Rome. De Lorena's diving bell only had enough space for a few minutes of oxygen, but the air inside his diving bell was reported to last one to two hours, with the limiting factor being the diver's ability to withstand cold and fatigue, not lack of oxygen. The mechanism he used was needed to keep the pressure inside the bell constant, supply fresh air, and remove exhaled air. Then in 1616, Franz Kessler designed an improved diving bell that reached the diver's ankles and added windows and weights to the bottom. Kessler's design no longer needed to be moored to the surface, but it is unclear whether it was built or not. In 1658, Albrecht von Trileben was allowed to salvage the Vasa warship that had sunk in the Stockholm harbor on its maiden voyage in 1628. The process of lifting most of these cannons used diving bells between 1663 and 1665. In 1689, Dennis Papin suggested that pressure and fresh air inside a diving bell could be maintained by a powerful pump or bellows. This concept was also used by an engineer named John Smeaton. Later, Dr. Edmund Halley completed plans for a diving bell that could stay underwater for a long time and had windows for underwater exploration. Halley's project was completed in 1691. Moreover, in 1701, a candy maker from Edinburgh named Charles Spaulding improved Halley's design by adding a balance weight system to make it easier to raise and lower the bell, along with a set of ropes to signal the surface crew. So how does this diving bell work? First, the bell is lowered into the water by a cable from a derrick, gantry, or A-frame mounted on a floating platform or shore structure. The bell has been weighted to keep it upright in the water and has negative buoyancy. This allows the bell to sink even when filled with air. The diving bell is also equipped with a hose supplied by a gas compressor or a set of high-pressure storage cylinders on the surface, providing breathing gas inside the bell. This hose has two functions, to produce fresh gas for the divers inside to breathe and to compensate for the reduction in air volume in the open bell due to increased hydrostatic pressure as the bell is lowered. The diving bell system itself is similar to a moon pool, but a moon pool is the size of one or two rooms, and the air-water interface at the bottom is limited to only one part, forming the entire bottom of the surface. Generally, there are two types of diving bells, open-bottom wet bells and closed bells that can maintain internal pressure greater than the external ambient pressure. Typically, the diving bell is suspended by a cable and can be raised and lowered by a winch from the support platform. Unlike submarines, diving bells are not designed to move under the control of their occupants or to operate independently of their launch and recovery systems. A wet bell or open bell is a platform with an air-filled space but open at the bottom where divers can stand and even sit with their heads out of the water. 
Usually, the bottom of the bell is a grid or deck where divers can stand and folding seats can be installed for diving comfort during the dive, as in-water decompression may take a long time. Other equipment carried in the bell includes cylinders with emergency gas supplies and racks or boxes for tools and equipment to be used during the underwater task. Meanwhile, a closed bell, also known as a dry bell, is a pressurized platform for human work that is lowered into the sea, but with its pressure equalized to the environment and open to allow divers to enter and exit. Therefore, a closed bell requires a pressure hatch at the bottom. The requirement for the bell to reliably maintain its internal pressure when the external pressure is reduced determines that the hatch opens inward so that the internal pressure will hold it closed. To be lowered to the desired depth, a closed bell must have negative buoyancy. This means that a closed bell will likely require additional weights that can be released from inside the bell in an emergency without losing pressure allowing the bell to float back to the surface. For modern diving bell applications, they are typically mounted on the side of a support vessel, platform or moon pool using a gantry or A-frame where the umbilical and bell loads are suspended. On diving support vessels with internal saturation systems, the bell is more often mounted through a moon pool. The bell umbilical will supply gas to the bell gas panel, which is connected to the gas panel inside the bell. The bell umbilical is mounted from a large drum and is carefully handled to keep the tension on the umbilical low but sufficient to maintain a vertical position during use and can be neatly coiled during recovery, as this reduces the risk of the umbilical snagging underwater obstacles. For modern diving bells, the handling of wet bells differs from closed bells because there is no requirement to move the bell to and from a chamber system to make a pressure-tight connection. Wet bells are required to maintain a well-controlled descent and ascent rate and ensure a steady depth within a sufficiently close tolerance for the occupants. On the other hand, closed bells can be removed from the water without delay and the ascent and descent rates are not as critical. One of the popular modern diving bells is the Carl Strat, with an overall length of 69 meters and built by Damon Shipyards in the Netherlands. The vessel, owned and operated by FMSW Koblenz, is intended for deployment on the Rhine River and its tributaries in Central and Western Europe for search and recovery of lost cargo and debris. Moreover, it is often deployed for underwater infrastructure inspections and to support construction work. The Carl Strat Diving Bell Construction Project required an investment of around 23 million euros or 27.6 million dollars. The Diving Bell, which has been in operation since 2021, allows operation in waters up to 10 meters deep while providing a completely dry working environment. The application of overpressure to the steel bell prevents water ingress, allowing for obstruction removal in completely dry conditions on the riverbed. In addition, the Carl Strat can create barrel anchors in gravel or rock areas to perform sampling and drilling work through drill holes equipped with nitrogen freezing on the Rhine River. The diving bell system has been modernized from its predecessor, including the lifting equipment on board, allowing it to perform its work easily and in a controlled manner. The latest version of the diving bell system on the Carl Strat integrates the Hox Starcom and Hox Bellstar hyperbaric chambers. The components of this diving bell include an entry lock, a locked shaft with a ladder, and a watertight Kaisen chamber, which is the main work area that can accommodate six personnel.
Compared to its predecessor, the diving bell assembly on the latest Carl Strat has also been enhanced to handle the effects of underwater current forces and is equipped with a Hox fire suppression system. All chamber components are supported by a high-performance breathing air system including heaters and isolation chambers inside the bell. To propel it, the Carl Strat is powered by a high-performance shuttle diesel electric propulsion system designed to meet EU Stage 5 standards. The propulsion system integrates three azimuth thrusters, two rudder propellers, and pump jets driven by electric motors. This enables the vessel to provide high maneuverability in confined waters and allows it to sail at a constant speed of 13 km per hour.